Welcome back to WGLNA. What you just watched was a montage of fun RNG as well as another transition. Uh, and <laughs> we're getting ready for our next match of the day. Our first was Simplistic versus Nerve, where Nerve was able to take it 3-0 after four battles were three victories and one draw. We do want to remind people again, just before th we went to the break, we went, we showed that we were issuing a challenge to the community because we want to make more montages. And this weekend, if you have a light tank and you have a really cool clip, just submit it to WGLNA at HeroLevel.com and you could win 2,000 gold a week of premium and a chance to win a premium tank. Now, I don't know which tank it is per se, but it's I believe really we're planning cool. on giving away a Locust, M22 oh, cool. Locust. It's a very cool, cool little light tank. Mm -hmm. uh, tier tier three. 3, yep, you got it right there. US. USA. Yep. It's a freedom tank, and it is <laughs> it is actually quite a little it's, it's powerful a tank little tank. It's tank that shoots democracy as far as I'm concerned. America. Yeah. Well, uh, let's go ahead and talk about our next series of the day. Randall, who are we going to watch? Yeah, we are going to see Cunninghams versus Ermagerd Kernavern, and we call them EC for short because that's hard to say. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit – it's a mouthful for some people. Of course, Kernavarn is – or Kernavon – Kernervan? Kernervan? I, it's hard to say now <laughs> with their van. name. It's like this white van that just offers candy to random lit light tanks that pass on by. I would take the candy. It's like, hey, do you want here some candy? Just hop on over to my Kernervan. Face-off okay. is ready, so let's go ahead and head to the screen and introduce you guys to the captains as they are ready for the match. Welcome. Wait, who is that? <laughs> that? Isn't that Tommy, Tommy Cannon? Isn't that you? <laughs> Behind yes, you. that All right, is. There it is. I want to uh, go ahead and welcome you guys. So uh, let's go ahead and start off with Ermagerd, Kerner, Vern, Tommy Cannon. Why are you hiding behind a blanket? You afraid, <laughs> you're afraid to show your face? Can you hear me? Uh, he's muted. Oh, quiet. I can't hear oh. you. Yeah. Did, did you mute oh, your mic? It's his mic. Oh, Tommy. Doesn't want to be seen, doesn't want to be heard. Let's go ahead and throw it to the Cunninghams, <laughs> Randall. Let's yep. go ahead. So <laughs> Cunninghams, oh, now we can hear uh. him. But Cunninghams, I think they get to keep talking. So Cunninghams, <laughs> Captain, uh, how are you feeling today? How, do you guys um, feel like you're prepared for this? Uh, yeah, I think so. We got a couple scrims in so far this week. So uh, I'm feeling pretty good. That's right. Uh, so you're, you're on summer break, are you not? Uh, sort of, taking summer classes, uh, okay. working, but yeah. How have you been able to balance life uh, in both regards? Uh, it's actually harder than I thought it would be, but, you know, it's still the summer. Plenty of time. It's still the summer. <laughs> oh, it's definitely lots of fun. Now, I want to ask you guys, uh, you guys were a team that qualified, or, or you guys were able to make it through the qualifiers. Oh, sorry, no, no. you seen that Ernberger could never made it through the qualifiers. What do you think of their play so far? Is? It's a lot different from most teams' conventional styles. Um... It is and it isn't. I don't know. It's a, it seems kind of fun. It'll uh, throw different things at you every now and then, keep it fast paced. So it looks like uh, we could have a few fun matches. Yeah, it is cool to see that. And uh, I guess we'll move on to Ermagerd Kerner Vern's captain, Tommy Cannon. How are you doing today, Tommy? Doing pretty good. Pretty good. You know, pretty relaxed. Uh, spent the last couple hours talking to Trouble, being part of his fan club. New strats coming <laughs> oh, up. We have a member of Trouble's Excuse fan me? club. How, <laughs> how dare you, okay? Not only inductee. is this going to be the most unbiasedly cast match, but also <laughs> I have to say that Treble is a very handsome person. I dis- uh, uh, excuse me. You resent that comment. I resent that comment. Yeah. Thank you. And who, who do you think pays his bills, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Cannon, uh, can we expect aggressive play like you guys in the qualifiers? Or are you guys, are you guys just going to throw in a new series of strategies that we've never seen before? You know, um, after watching some of these replays, I'm loving the camp strat, um, where everyone just kind of takes multiple <laughs> sections of the map. And uh, I was watching, not to, not to di diss anybody, but who is it now? Simp and Nerf. Um, they spend the first five minutes doing nothing, which I love. I think that's a great strategy. Um, you get a lot done. And uh, you lose your T1s usually, and uh, that's pretty cool. You don't really use them at all. Well, they, they don't um, really camp. So, uh, so I'm, I'm thinking of switching to that. That's pretty good. It's been working for us. So, yeah. Okay, well. It's good to hear. Is there anything you have to say to your opponents right now, Sami? Um, no, we're excited to play some new people. I mean, we're, we're finding that uh, when we throw out some crazy new stuff that everybody gets better overall. And um, we know that there's going to be a lot more teams to be played. And uh, after looking at these guys, they're, uh, you know, they're looking pretty good. I mean, it was nice talking to you before, Martin. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, a little stressed with Clan Wars right now, but uh, we should be okay. We should be doing good. That's All good. right, so, uh, so we're going to go ahead and do the initial coin flip. We're going to ask Martin to go ahead and call it in the air, in the virtual air. Uh, I, 
All right, so I just pick one now. Okay, <laughs> heads, guys. Are heads are tails. Heads are tails. So a coin tails. has two sides. All right, tails, tails it is. Head. What? And the eagle. <laughs> As uh, is the case. So you actually get to choose the first map, or you can defer. What would you like? Defer. Okay, so Tommy Cannon, you're going to pick the first map. Which would it be? Okay. Uh, we're going to pick airfield. Oh, oh, airfield. Okay. And now we get to see Western the Cunninghams spot. choose the, the spawn. And he says the West, West spawn? Yeah. All right. So West side will go to Cunninghams. East will go to Ermagerd Kurnivern. Why do you guys do this to me, man? Thank you so much. Good luck in your matches, boys. Thank you. Welcome to Airfield, where we have the site for our first battle between these two teams. The red team over towards the western side is Cunningham's in the red. And over in the blue, the lower seated, but certainly not to be underestimated, is Ermagud Kernavan. The blue team. And let's go ahead and throw it to Gritor to talk about opening positions and uh, movement patterns. Andre, what's going on? Talk to me, bro. Looks like Ermagud Kernavan is just moving completely past the grinder. They're going over close to the airfield. Really interesting position. I think they're going to try to make a, a big surprise attack, obviously, in a direction where normally you're not prepared for this type of fire. And here we go. Trouble 2 playing it so well. Oh, my God. You're so good. <laughs> the, fan, the member of the fan club has spoken as we have our McGregor with vintage aggression. Beaguk and uh, Militant are under heavy fire. DeRosa and Vec are going to clean up here in the grinder, or close to the grinder. Militant now under fire as well. Kill number two has been established. And Rigger Kernivern jumping out to a 7-5 lead, and A. Martin, the T-32, is supposed to get a hold down position, but that has anything but. And he is going to go down. We have three tanks down on the side of Cunningham's right now. Ermager Kernvern has only lost Vect. Their 5100s will be on reload soon. T1s on the other side of the map are engaging. Silent Demise is out of the fight, and Commander J is all alone. I guess the best, uh, the, the biggest con a T32 has is it can't shoot while it's dead. As currently we have both of them are down for Cunningham's. And now Silent Demise, the only person that hasn't received damage, the only person on Cunningham's that's above a tier 1 tank as we have uh, Trireme and Caster Starwind. They are still alive, but how much impact can they really have? Ermagerd Kernavern absolutely blazing out of the gate with aggression that we've come to expect. Yep, that was really, really solid play. I did not expect it to work quite so cleanly as that. I think it was because Silent Demise was not quite in position, not quite ready for that. And we actually, it might be a cap race of sorts here because both T1s and Silent Demise are going to get on cap. We've got three on the red bases cap, so that is in the west side there. And in the east, we have only Silent Demise on cap. The two T1s not quite here yet. I here it goes. I don't think Good. you guys have to worry. Yeah. Right. Trouble 2 is going back to the base. <laughs> Trouble and, and I'm pretty Urtai sure are on the way back. Urtai is great too, but Trouble, watch this deny really quick. It's going to come up here. He is approaching with his T69. And boom. There's the reset. Great job, Trouble. You are just fanboying out right now. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Steven, of course, is in the back, and he's doing very well as he's getting the last couple of shots as Trireme does drop Caster Starwind trying to do something, but it won't matter as Irma Gerd Gernivern takes the first battle and starts things off with huge amounts of aggression. Again, something that we've seen a lot, and it just it, it seems to work out serendipitously every time. It's like, oh, you're also charging us, except you're split, so let's just win. Yeah. It just seems to work out like that every time. Yeah. They, I, I felt like it should have been so easy to predict that kind of move. If there's one spot you can attack from, on airfield it is right through the grinder and they just went straight through <laughs> and it looked like we didn't see any preparation for that out of cunningham's they just weren't ready they thought they were they just totally unprepared and we saw a little bit of uh, focus fire kind of go not actually focus on the side of cunningham's well let's go ahead and toss it to our resident trouble two fan club president it's greetor uh, yeah, guys, I mean, obviously, Ermagerd Kernivern was able to just come smashing out of the gate. But really, uh, again, we talked about this We talked about this slightly before. We had uh, Silent Demise going up all the way to the north. That's eight tier points that you're willing to commit all the way to the airfield. And you saw he was slightly late. It wasn't super late, but he was slightly late 
on that initial engagement. And when you have that, you have good crossfire, but it takes a long time to get over there. And not only that, Amex 1390s are not nearly as capable of aiming and firing at the correct spots at all times. So it, it showed just a, a brief m amount of hesitation over on that side. And it, I, I really feel like it affected. On top of that, the T32s weren't in the perfect position they weren't able to just stabilize the position. Whenever you have a T32, you have to think, I need to slow down the pace of the game as much as possible. I know you have a lot of auto loaders. I'm going to make it very uncomfortable for you to push in like that. But Ermagerd Kernavern was able to snap call right on the beginning when they're still setting up positions. That does say that I believe, um, uh, now I'm blanking. What? The, the, I'm blanking. What is it? The teams. Oh. Or McGregor, and, and Cunningham. Cunningham's. Oh, Cunningham's. Excuse me. The, okay. the clever pigs. Thank you, guys. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, the Cunninghams, they need to be a little bit slower to take their positions. I know you guys were talking about how they were kind of slow to take them, but they need to be even slower, knowing that there's so many blitz plays coming up with a full auto loader lineup. You know, after thinking about it, Gritor, I think wearing the hat forwards is a lot better look than backwards. Just I, uh, I agree. And he's going to turn it sideways. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like either. No, but you're going to watch here. Like, the blitz is so, so important, right? That's the one thing that you can do with autoloaders over something uh, as if you brought a T32 of that, or, or two T32s, I should say. Um, so you can see they're already going to be isolated out here super, super early. They're trying to take so much of the map, but they can't do it with their lineup. And this is a big problem. The Amex 1390, you can see, is super far away from this first initial battle. And that's going to be enough time to take out multiple tanks. Well, Emigrant Kernavern does take the first map. We're going to throw it to a quick one-minute break as we get ready for battle number two. And we return. The, the series continues between Emigrant Kernavern and Cunningham. Welcome back, everybody, to WGLNA. We're currently in the middle of a series between Cunningham's and Ermagerd Kernavern. Cunningham's has lost the first map, but they have picked Ensk in response. And we're going into a city map for battle number two after we were just on a desert map. So camos change, and now plans have changed. Let's go into the battle as currently Ermagerd Kernavern is up one to zero. Welcome to Ensk, in the south side of the city. I don't know what kind of city it is. I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's a Russian city. We have the red team. It's the Cunninghams, currently down at 0-1, led by A. Martin, the captain. And in the blue side, heading over to the western blocks, we have Irma Gerd Kernavern, the blue team, currently up 1-0. Yep, it looks like uh, we're actually going to get some nice early spotting here. IS-3s and DM Gomes are going to go up on the side of Ermagerd Carnivern, but I'm wondering what everyone is doing in relation to each other. Yeah, I agree, Tor, let's uh, point things out and use your amazing analysis abilities. Yeah, right now, everybody's just setting up. Um, oh. I actually love what we're seeing from, honestly, Cunningham's. Yeah. Um, even though they're losing their, uh, well, two T1s are going to be lost in the be very beginning stage. What I like is that Ensk is probably the easiest map to slow things down. Yeah, it is very easy to slow things down. It's very hard to aggress. So... I'm, I'm actually seeing their spots going all the way around. It doesn't look like Ermagerd Kernburn's actually going to do anything aggressive. No, they did yeah. lose Gomes pretty early on to a shot uh, from the T-69. That's King Kong yeah. currently in the T-69. Yeah, so a, a nice shot down the six lines to be able to eliminate one of the light bulbs for Ermagerd Kernburn. It was a pretty nice shot there, and Gomes uh, probably should have done a better job at covering himself. You know, he exposing himself like that just to get shot, he, they knew he was there. And it was really too too bad for him. You can really do a much better job at spotting down the six line without getting yourself killed. Uh, playing straight into the hands of Cunningham's is not what you want to do. Because they have a college degree, man. They know what they want to. They know what, what's up. They know yep. the future. And here we actually see two IS3s, uh, Militant and Trireme, are actually moving around, taking the farthest back they can on the K line here to avoid getting spotted as they transition to the east. Ooh. They're getting out of the west side of the map. They're here. spotted though. They, they are spotted. Two, um, King Kong, and I can't see who the other person I is. I believe it's Millicent. 
Yeah, Militant was spotted as yeah, well, right. so the movement from Cunningham's has been exposed. Remember, Gary Kernerfern is going to respond by slowly taking the E blocks and continue to... Uh, well, actually, they're kind of rearranging, and some of them are grouping together. Meanwhile, Cunningham still pushing very aggressively over towards the Lumber Yard, where we used to see lots of action around here, but it seems most teams tend to favor the city initially. Now they're rotating over. Yeah, so that T1 Whiskey Dot out in the east, he's going to be the next guy who will spot this movement out of Cunningham's as they cross both IS3s leading the way into the lumber yard. I'm going to need to know when those guys get lit because the second they're that happens, lit. they are lit. Oh, there we go. That's oh what I'm man. expecting to see some movement out of Ermager Kernivern here. They're going to respond by rushing back to the scene. Whiskey Dot coming through in the clutch, but he's also lit up, so his time on the field events might not be that much longer, but we're still going to see the charge. Now you can initiate a stack along Ooh. the piles over into the base. The first shots have been fired, but only person to get damage is Tri-Reem. And King Kong shot those. And he, remember, he's in the T-69. The IS-3s want to be the ones shooting out at that T-1. Unfortunately, we are going to see a little bit of clipping from that T-69 that does give um, Ermagerd Kernivern enough time to really move in and also get the KV-5 out there. Commander J looking for Whiskey Dodd. Whiskey, one of the best scouts in North America. You're going to try to get out of there in time, but I don't think he can outrun this scenario as King Kong is able to finish. Now, that does buy Ermagerd Kernivern some time to be able to rotate back to their base. Uh, are they in position, though, Rukil? What, what do you take on the current positions? I'd say Cunningham's is in a really weird position right now. You can't really aggress this as... Ermagard turnover, and you can't. You just can't cross that open. You're even your own cap. You can't cross. And it looks like with this kind of dispersion to the north, Ermagard turnover might try and go for something on the cap. They might put one of their 5100s over there, have him cross in the south. Maybe that would be an interesting distraction to see, as the rest of the team would stay back and shoot anyone who's crossing in the open. But it looks like because Whiskey Dot took so long to kill, that. Cunningham's has decided not to continue their forward motion, and they're going to kind of slow things down. And it looks like they're t uh, they're Autoloaders are going to get into position to... Ooh, nice shot. Uh, Urtai taking a couple of hits, uh, but he did manage to trade with Trireme. IS3 on IS3. Yeah, that Trireme is down to 752 health. That could be quite something in a fight. IS3 is supposed to be here for tons of health as a nice damage soak and a good chance to bounce, but if he's at 752, he can't take much. Luckily, Militant is still full health. That's right, and that will be allow... Cunningham's with some hits that they can absorb. DeRosta trying to get a spot on b Gug, but he whiffs as he's not able to finish the T1. Uh, but still, both of the T1s, b Gug and A. Martin 223, the captain of the Cunningham's, are both hanging back. Remember, Greg Kernervern still spread all over the western side of the map because in the end, they can't really make too many moves because they are outnumbered. Uh, and the, and the, the, the lights are too easy for them to get spotted and get shot down. A. Martin is going to start moving across the map because he wants to be able to get some spots on these members from EC. I'm feeling like maybe they want a cap at this point. A. Martin, the way he's moving, it looks like he's going to wait for his battle buddy here, B. Guck. B. Guck, once they join him, I'm thinking maybe we'll see some kind of cap fast or maybe they'll move up and try and get some nice proxy spotting. If they can get some proxy, proxy spotting along the six line, that could be exactly what Cunningham's needs to get out some nice damage, even up this match, and really put it into their favor. They do have both T1s for, for uh, Ermager Kernivern down, so they've got a really distinct advantage here as far as numbers of tanks and their ability to flex around the map. What do you think about the Cunningham's actually receding all the way back and then moving all around? Like we see what's going on oh, right wow. here. Oh, wow. Oh, I see that right now. Yeah, that could be... Oh, I see what might happen. Okay. Oh, but it looks like we might see if someone spotted Trouble 2 is oh. spotted the KV-5. Yes. And just in time, we've got these auto loaders sitting here. Perfect position to destroy Trouble as he moves out into the open, smashing all cover. Trouble does... Well, Trouble is going to continue to move down. And all of a sudden, Ermager Kernivern making a massive blitz towards red base. Only person remaining is Urtai from Ermagerd Kernivern hanging over by A5. Meanwhile, Ermagerd Kernivern is going to take some shots, but it comes at a cost as Silent Demise is able to finish off Kemzi, and that's a huge trade for Cunningham's. Yep. And now on in the north, we're actually going to see a cap begin. Both IS3s, Trireme and Militant, getting on cap to cover for A. Martin and B. Guck. This is perfect for Cunningham's. They're getting great damage out because 
Ermac Gurk and has split their team in two and at the same time exposed themselves to a cat fast that you can't, they are not set up with a crossfire to deal with this. They Ooh. are not in trouble too. Is the only member alive for Ermagerd, Kerner Vern, uh, in the south side. He's getting flanked and KV5, sure, he got lots of hit points, but he's not able to be able to handle both T69 and AMX50. As the last me last couple of members from Erger and Kerner Vern trying frantically to stop the cap, but there's still four members alive from Cunningham's that can dish out lots of pain. Yep. And at the same time, we see that is uh, King Kong here has great shots on the back of Vect, who can't get any cover from anyone. If he, no matter where he goes, he is exposed to someone right now. Uh, well, a shot does miss. Never mind. Second shot is good. Vect down to his last few hit points does die as well, which means. The Cunninghams will tie up the series one to one. And that's going to, uh, well, I mean, they did pick the map, and that's the kind of pace that they wanted to play. Ermagerd Kernervern was not able to be able to influence the map as much as they did. They were very reactive from the beginning. Yeah, that was a really interesting show of the way Ermagerd Kernervern doesn't know how to act when it slows down. It looks like they've really lot of, lost a lot of that potency that we were seeing on open maps so they could be so aggressive. Over in the red side of the map, the north part, we have the Cunningham's currently tied 1-1 with their opponents. Then we have Armageddon, Kernavern, and they're doing what we've normally come to expect, Greetorp, which is all, uh, all men down the center. And this isn't looking good. Amex 1390's Commander J and Silent Demise going to be caught out here. But here's the big difference. T69's on that top with the WZ-132. They're oh. already lining up shots, anticipating this tactic. Three shots missed in to between Gomes and Trouble 2. Jay finally taking some hits, but now it's an all-out brawl. Now Gomes going to try to get in there and, and try to do as much damage. Silent Demise taking a couple shots as well, but it seems for now, Cunningham has gotten the better end of the trade thus far. Beautifully done going over to the train tracks. As soon as they start clipping, they're going to cross it so they're not exposed. Mm, trouble 2 also taking big shots. The first person to drop is Gomes as he is going to be taken down by Silent Demise. And Trouble 2 is now going to be taken out as well by King Kong. And this is a, a really aggressive strategy coming from Rigurd Kernervern, but it's working the opposite uh, effect t intended. It's really not working. It looks like we've got Cunningham's perfectly prepared for this strat. They've got tanks off in the west here on the hill. We got Bibaguk, uh, King Kong, and Militant all s completely prepped for this. They have taken great positions to fire from. Bibaguk, uh, Militant is nice in a nice raised position, so he is not going to have any trouble getting any shots around here. It's a really nice vantage here. And Darasta, he's gotten some spots, but he's not able to do much as the only person you can see is Trireme. And all members from Cunningham's, as you guys saw in a nice checkered formation, is able to shut down anybody in a line format with good crossfire. Merger Kernervern's going to have to shift, but keep in mind that they already have some shots taken as Tommy Cannon is already less than one half of his life. What is he down to right now? Wow. Uh, Tommy Cannon is down to just 478 hit points left. That is two hits from just about anything, and he mm. is gone. That is too bad for him. And, yeah, everyone on Cunningham's team is still alive and barely damaged. I mean, Silent Demise at this point, the lowest one, I think, on the team at 450. Oh, hey, Kemsey is lit by Trireme here. And Trireme is going to drop extremely quickly, but that's one shot of the T69 that the Cunningham does not have to worry about. Militant and King Kong are going to hold, or sorry, Beacock and King Kong are going to hold the line over at E6 while Cunningham's rotates. Now, Ermagerd Kernervern is not out of this yet. There are some pretty weak members of Cunningham's, especially since they're in the 1390s. It's almost sometimes a guaranteed pen, depends on, well, actually, it's not a guaranteed pen if it's dependent it's on something. It's very difficult it's to pen these. You could, <laughs> the only time I'd see bounces happening are, you know, you get that angle that is just so sharp that not even your overmatch really counts, right. or into the tracks. So but those they do kinds have to be shots. careful. Cunningham's they do need to. very yeah. fragile tanks that can go down any second. Oh, yeah. 1390s, I wouldn't expect bounces. Not especially with any of these lineups. T69s, though, with that really weird slopey armor, you could get some cool bounces. Although A. Martin has begun the cap. Blue base is up to 25% cap. And that would help if they can uh, somehow jump A. Martin before Cunningham's can get down there, but... We do have the mobility advantage from the Cunninghams as they can get the 1390s closer down. 
A couple shots fired into the middle of the field. DeRosta also still trying to get in position, but it seems that Militant is just trying to distract Ermagrade Kernervern oh, from being able to He is going to, to spot Urtai and Tommy Cannon right here. And they are lit. Tommy Cannon gets targeted. Someone's throwing uh -oh. T's out. He gets hit. He can't take one oh. shot, and he does. King Kong is able to finish it off. And that might almost, that might put Ermagrade Kernervern in an unwinnable position as They're Silent Demise is able to finish off DeRosta, and all that remains is Kenzie and Urtai. Yeah, I don't see them being able to pull this one out here. T69s are great tanks, and this is an open map where it's totally possible to do that kind of thing. But with this aim, with A Barton on cap, 76%, 20 seconds left, they have to not only stop cap, they have to then kill everyone else. And Cunningham's does not seem all that intent on even attacking at this point. They know they've got the win. They'll keep everyone in overwatch positions. These T69s have no chance. There's Kemsey getting targeted. You see that little target going up? That is them teeing their targets. Urtai gets exposed down to 473 here. That's enough for a couple more shots. Militant coming up. He could finish off Urtai. And nope, Silent Demise again going for the kill secure. The Cunningham's caps out Ermagerd Kernervern and shuts down their aggressive, st aggressive strategy on Pro Wolfgang. Wow, that is the first time they've uh, they've had that shut down. And that's the first time that we've seen that strat, I think, on Pro Kurofka in the regular season, right? Yeah, that's right. Normally we don't see too much aggression. In fact, we see quite the opposite. We see people turtling up in corners. And Tom McCannon kind of made a joke about that, how <laughs> he, uh, he likes those strategies right in the pregame interview. But we all know the truth is that Ermagerd Kernervern likes to be really aggressive. And instead, it did not work out in their favor for this yeah, time. If you keep using the same strat over and over, someone's going to counter it eventually. And it looks like it's already been countered, so they're going to have to fall back on some different strategy in order to continue doing that. Although I don't expect that that strat's completely out the window because it's still applicable sometimes. Welcome to Himmelsdorf, where we see the Cunninghams already moving up towards the eastern part of the map. That is the red team in the north side. In the south side, we have Ermagerd Kernervern currently down 1-2. They are taking the west side. Now, it's an interesting switch because, like you said, Gritorp in previous matches, that's not usually the case in north-south side in terms of dynamic on Himmelsdorf. A lot of metagame going on right now. I mean, for them to focus so much on the hill tells me they want to actually get some sort of jump and an advantage in some sort of screen cap. And it's really apparent, and they're banking, they're banking on Ermagerd Kernavern being passive on the west side. Maybe shut down the t uh, potential T69 that likes to creep up there. We've seen games in the past where Tommy Cannon likes to get up there and rain hell on whoever's able to pass by. Ermagerd Kernavern, meanwhile, they're not doing that at all. They said they're gearing over towards the station. And we're go that's going to be set up by Vect and DeRosta, both spotting the hill and uh, the station as well. Oh. T1 fight going down. Gomes Ooh. will, wow, Gomes will get knocked out without even doing a single point of damage. That he was Caster not prepared Starwind. for that bush. No, he was not. That he should be. That is, oh, oh. wow. And then Caster Starwind gets DM Gomes in return, but Urtai and Trouble 2 do get spotted from that. So we do have indication of the location of Ermagerd's forces to Cunningham's, although Cunningham still doesn't know. Well, sorry, Ermagerd still does not know where Cunningham's has placed their main wow. force. But look at how aggressive Ermagerd Kernavern is being right now. Trouble 2 and Tommy Cannon already moving up the two line. At the same time, Cunningham's hasn't been phased at all. Ooh, they get oh. the spot on the oh. second, uh, on the hill rather, as two members from Cunningham's has been exposed. Trireme and Militant, the IS-3s, are still holding down Tank Alley just in case there was a big push, but now all of a sudden we might have a scenario where both teams were pushing really aggressive. They know the Cunninghams are starting to withdraw because they realize Ermigir Kernavern has been really aggressive, and now Urtai has been spotted by Trireme and Militant, which should tip off Cunninghams of what's going on. Yep, right now we, I'm expecting to see a retreat here, and here it is. Yep, we've got 5100s returning to the base. Silent Demise leading the way. Have they Commander been too J slow, though, here? Right uh, no, they will get there in just enough time. They'll have plenty of time to stop the cap here as here we see Urtai is spotted. I don't know who else is on cap, though. Silent Demise five seconds out from cap. He'll probably come right around this corner, and he's going to just unload on whoever he can. Kemsey and Urtai stacking up. The Rostick bringing in the rear, trying to see if he can hold it down. Milton and Silent Demise will be the ones to first arrive to the scene. Silent Demise taking a big shot from Trouble. Big alpha damage. Silent Demise taking another shot. Good job thus far from Ermagerd Kernervern as we still have 35 seconds on the clock. 
Now Trouble 2 kind of used that hold down position, tr uh, trying to rain down. He does manage to take out Silent Demise, but Urtai has been, it was also taken out by Commander J. Cunningham needs to get the reset, and they do. Kemzy and Tommy Cannon were not able to hold that position. Militant here is going to be proxy spotting Tommy Cannon. Kemzy and Tommy have just given up on trying to cap now. The pressure, it's just a straight up fight. Trouble's in a great hold down. I really yes. like this. And uh, meanwhile, during this entire time, Militant will have to fight 1v2, but Darasta has been able to fight Vect, having a T1 fight, winning back at home, so no counter cap option. Militant's side is exposed, and Kemzy will be able to finish off. So four members down from a Cunningham's. Ermagir Kernifern has the man advantage and a good hit point pool as well. Almost none of them has taken damage other than Kemsey getting shot by b -Guck. Fantastic job here, and they set up perfectly. They knew exactly how their enemy was going to come and return to stop the cap. Commander J here is now trying to move in order to stop Darasta here. He is just, all he wants to do is get the kill. The cap is still going, though. His red base is up to, it was down to 12 seconds, 10 seconds yeah, left. 10 it's seconds over. is not going to be enough, even if... This it's Commander J does live. He does manage to take out Durasta. The last few seconds are going to belong to Ermagur Kernervern as Vect is going to distract Commander J, set his reticles on the red. As red base is captured, Ermagur Kernervern ties it up two to two. <coughs> it's a nice cap fast strategy, which ended up turning to be a brawl, which ended up turning to be a cap fast. Which ended up kind of brawling and cap fasting and it was a it was a it was a brawl fast yeah it was it was interesting using that cap pressure Ermac Carnivore was able to really set the tone for the whole pay for well they were able to decide where the fight would happen yeah. so they set that pace mm -hmm. Trouble in nice that hold down. Hold down oh, yeah, really and then good. Durasta ready for that flank. That yeah. Who was that? That was an IS-3, I think, that was going to flank, and then Durasta was waiting there for him. I you like can't. that Kemzy uh, and Tommy Cannon were also able to use uh, Urtai's dead dead yeah. carcass as like a way to play against some of the members from Cunningham's as well, and they were able to really position themselves right. But we don't want to steal the analysis opportunities from Grito for too long. Andre, what? Do you also observe that you have left to say about that match on Himmelsdorf? You know, I, I felt like the game was almost over before any shots were fired. Uh, I shouldn't say that any shots of the main battle was fired. And it's because of the brilliant position the of Trouble 2. two. Yeah. That hold okay. down position was just How free damage the whole time. Welcome back, everybody, to WGL. We're currently in the middle of a series between Cunningham's and Ermagerd Kerner Vern. It's tied 2-2. Two to two. And Ruinberg will be the last map, Randall. I'm really excited. What's who's gonna take it, man? Who's gonna take game five? I don't know, man. We've just seen this. Just, it's so close. Make I the don't hard know. pick. The hard pick. I I don't know if EC can do it right now. They've so you're really. Go with Cunningham. I'm gonna go with Cunningham. Well, I'm gonna go with EC. Let's go into Himmelsdorf or Ruinberg rather for battle number five. Immelsdorf, Ruinberg, kind of sounds the same. I mean, it's an honest mistake, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the right. map with the broken buildings. Oh, they all have broken buildings. It's the map with the slightly more destroyed buildings. Gritorf, you're drawing on the screen. What's going on, man? Yep. Something that we kind of expected, of course, Ermagerd Kernivern going over to the west side, whereas Cunninghams are going over to the east side just based on their spawning locations. Mm, trouble Very two. early pick, though. Yeah, Trouble 2 already gets the jump on Star or Caster Starwind. And now we see a massive push, just like Greetorp has motioned over towards the western block, the city block. Now, Cunningham says uh, what was positioning for uh, an east delta village hold while using some of the bushes, but instead, it's a cap fast, and I expect Ooh. nothing less of Ermagerd Kernivert. Look at this positioning by Trouble 2. This is really audacious, I have to say. The WZ-132 going on to go all the way over to this little uh, town group of buildings over here, and this is trying to screen the cap. Gomes is mm. his battle buddy, of course. A little bit of disorganization as Gomes is running into Trouble 2, but over in A7, Silent Demise has to fight 1v2, a couple of missed shots from Silent Demise, but he does manage to get some help there from King Kong as now the members from Cunningham are are coming back to help. Meanwhile, over onto the flag, Darasta is facing off against Militant with a couple of help. Gomes trying to hold off as long as they can, but 
it's not really working out too well for Ermagir Kernervern, at least right now, in terms of the numbers advantage. Gomes will drop soon, but Peacock misses a big shot on Gomes. That might be what Ermagir Kernervern needs. Five seconds on the clock. Can they really oh. end this here? Four seconds left as Ermagir Kernervern trying to finish off the match in exciting fashion. Red base is captured. Ermagir Kernervern gets the fast cap on Ruhenberg in under just two minutes of play. What an exciting finish as right now we're focusing so much on the action that we didn't realize that there was such little time on the clock left. Phenomenal job by EC. That was really Oof. great screen right there with Gomes and Trouble. You know, I, I, they didn't, I didn't expect them to live, especially if those, the two T69s and the 5100 stayed to fight them, but they couldn't because they had other things to deal with. They had to yeah. deal with the cap. And yeah. we saw, I actually, I wanted to talk about that 110 I saw with the 122, but there's no time yeah. because... <laughs> the action got right underway. The, yeah, the action just started, so there was no time for any of that nonsense. All right, so let's kind of yeah. like reset a little bit and even watch about what just happened. All I could see on my screen right here is you can uh, go to the, the instant replay is that Duras and Militant were fighting in the front, but I didn't realize there were so many members of Ermengarde Kernervern still stacked there because Gomes was just trying to stall, and that's why in the end B. Gug directed his attention because the time on the clock was so little. Originally, it just jumped from 15 to 5 because of the three-man capped and Kenzie effect. Very big proponents there of stacking a lot of the time there for Ermengar Kernervern. Yeah, that was a really good job there. Yeah. Those T1s didn't take any hits. I think one of the no. IS3s. Did any of the IS3s go without getting hit? Maybe one of them, uh, right? I, I couldn't really tell. Maybe oh, you can yeah, watch it again. It's, hard to, it's really hard to Let's tell so much chaos. Let's watch that again. An instant replay of the instant replay. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> Let's go ahead and also uh, toss it over to Greetorp to see what he has to say about the match. It was nice. I mean, Cunningham's, I felt like, did the right things. They took out trouble really early on we, in that WZ-132. They left the AMX. Uh, I believe it was a 5100, but they they left the other AMX, b knowing that okay, what this your your round isn't going to matter. You're going to deplete everything, and then I can actually do stuff for. Uh, you're going to be useless for for quite a long time, just about a half minute. So they ignored him and tried to reset the cap as fast as possible. They just couldn't get into position. And what that tells me is the the opening, the opening that Cunningham did doesn't defend well against these fast caps. They're not completely saying, okay, uh, we'll, we'll be fine against these, uh, kind of assuming that their position is going to hold them true. But when it came down to it, it was just they were too slow to get on there, and it's because they went way too far out too fast it for that worse, opening. Too. They could have been charging the Delta Village like initially off the bat, and they would have been way out of position to do oh anything. Yeah. It, it could have been worse. I think Cunningham yeah. still was able to respond really quick. King Kong, of course, rushing back to get into the scene, but even then, Good job by Gomes. Good b job by Trouble 2 to stall as long oh, as they can. Oh, Frodan. <laughs> it's not a good job. It's a great job by Trouble 2. <laughs> it is a great job. Uh. The president of the fan club has spoken. Yeah. Do you have any last words before we head off into commercial break, Randall, about the series? That, that was a really was entertaining. That was really five. good. I yeah, it. I'm liking yeah. I like it when it goes, you know, two and three because it shows that both teams are really good. They really understand each other. And they and respond to each other. Exactly. That was just... It was very nice play from both teams, and I expect to see Cunningham still perform well as this goes on. They showed they definitely deserve to be here. Of course. Uh, so good luck to Cunningham's in the future, but Ermagerd Kunnerburn will take the first series. Again, like we mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast, Trouble 2 is actually playing like 50 feet behind us at the back of the studio, so he will get him for an interview later tonight as we get him uh, all sorted out in the back and with all his congratulations. I'm sure Gitorp's giving him a hug right now after that great series that was played, ending in a 3-2 victory on Ruenberg. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to get our third match underway very soon. It's going to be Fulcrum versus Bearhuggers over in the Alpha Conference Division. Don't go anywhere. We'll return right after this. <laughs> 